so I can move this bracket here and fit a larger battery. These back to back here, um, the H6 is much bigger. So you will have to move that bracket. It's not big, it's not a big lip, it comes right out. All right. To be some type of um, little bracket back there. It's hard to see that the battery kind of slides into. The battery out, pull it forward to get it out of its little bracket thing. So now it's free, you know. Maybe that's what I couldn't get out. Yep, that's what it was. All right. There it is. Oh boy. In the workshop. Oh, there we go. Uh, battery type. Change of value to AGM. Activate. And let's change that to 70. To benefit from the larger capacity. This is our 2020 Volkswagen Jetta. It has 58,266 miles. Being that it is November of 2024 as I'm filming this, um, the battery is going on potentially for maybe maybe five years, uh, depending on the manufacturing date. When I was doing a recent service reset, I noticed that the battery uh, did not hold 12 and a half volts. Now that is very common for these cars because they come with start-stop and that drains the battery a little bit. And they didn't come with AGM batteries, to, you know, the glass, absorbent glass mat style batteries that do a better job of being able to drain and recharge more frequently over time. So you have a situation where these batteries uh, tend, to, tend to really only last maybe this three or four year time period. Her battery is actually fine, like if I turn the car on right now, it starts with a little bit of a hiccup. My Volkswagen Atlas, when this happened, mine was a 19, I just did mine last year. So. Mine actually started to have a bunch of electrical faults, which is common with a low voltage battery. It starts to do crazy electrical things that makes you think that everything's broken, but really it's just the battery. So keep that in mind. Similar timeline. Um, I bought mine from Walmart. Now the Walmart warranty, you have to put a copy of your receipt in your glove box for the future because the receipt will fade and they need the receipt apparently. So keep a copy of the receipt and go box. Same deal with Costco, right? So like theoretically, if you return it, they would give you your appropriate money back and then that's it. So it fails before 36 months. So it's it's that same time timeline. You know, you know, three years. That's how much they think these batteries are gonna last for. So we always drive with the start stop off. I mean, it's still good, but you don't want to risk getting in your car someday, somewhere away, far away from home and then it won't start. So we're gonna do the work. And if you don't have an OBD11 USB dongle Bluetooth thing, um, you should look into getting one because not only is this gonna help me register the battery and change the battery, uh, change the computer uh, input to recognize the, the AGM battery <clears throat> so that it, it knows the type of battery and then the capacity because I'm gonna check right now, but I believe they, some of them came with H5s, which are a little smaller, and I, I bumped it up to the H6, because that's a, that's an, that will also fit in the same spot. without any, any additional drain on the alternator, and, and it should fit perfectly within inside of the engine bay. Next thing for us to do is just go under the hood, but um, if you have the OBD11, you can plug it in and verify if your battery is uh, holding a 12 and a half volt check. For someone who's daily driving their car, they get in the car every day, they turn it on, it charges the battery, and then they do it again every day. The battery doesn't have enough time for it to degrade enough for it to not start. So you may not notice it right away. But if you leave the car for a couple of days, maybe a week, you go away for a vacation, you come back, that's where it's, oh, now that small amount of degradation over time has accumulated to the point where now maybe the car doesn't have enough juice to start. Um, Always keep one of those backup portable jump start things in your car, you know, always be prepared. But nonetheless, um, that's why we're doing this in advance, even though, as you just saw, the car starts technically. But this car has sat here for maybe two days and it did give it a little bit of a rumble. It's not my car and I don't want the headache and I don't want the phone call. So I'm going to preemptively change this and hopefully smooth sailing from here. What we do see here is that there is a secondary spot here for that bolt 
so I can move this bracket here and fit a larger battery. And that is what I have done, I believe, unless this is also an H6. This, this EFB type of battery is not, I guess, the most advanced type of battery, especially for a start-stop system that does put a bit of a drain like we discussed before. It could be uh, <clears throat> part of the reason but you know, some of the cars are fitted with AGMs to begin with. So if you don't already have one, you can see that most of the OEM ones have this EFB. Uh, the easy thing here is it's probably, it's just that one bolt down there and then the 10 millimeters on, on the two uh, terminals. What I would start with is the negative terminal just to discharge the system and then go ahead and remove the rest of the stuff. Using a 10 millimeter. That's too much. Now we've got to find a 13 or a 12 for that bottom one. Bottom 13. Let me take it down. There's a bit of a lip here. So it looks like this kind of inserts in there. So you may need to push this forward and out somehow. So we Yep, see? It's not big, it's not a big lip. It comes right out. Alright. And it kind of sits around the base of the battery. Oh, and try not to let your negative touch your bottom. Oh, okay. oh, don't touch both of those at the same time. That's not a good idea either. It to be some type of um, little bracket back there. It's hard to see that the battery kind of slides into in the back. So that's good to know that you have to pull the battery out, pull it forward get it out of this little bracket thing. So now it's free, you know. So maybe that's what I couldn't get out. Yep, that's what it was. All right. So, as you can see in here, it's quite dirty. Do as you will, clean it as you want. Um, spray paint it, whatever you gotta do. Be cool, be creative. I'm not gonna do any of that, sorry. Yeah, but there is, interestingly enough, this battery base is for so many different vehicles. There are three separate locations. As you can see, this was the original location. Uh, we may have to bump it out to this one though, for the H6. He's back to back here. Um, the H6 is much bigger. So you will have to move that bracket. Um, I can probably squeeze this battery thing back on here. It'll probably rip. There it is. Oh boy. Like that. Yeah, that's it. That's the winning ticket. So, we're looking here, down there into the galley. Yeah, that's better. So make sure it's sitting nice and flush here. You can see right through to the screw hole. It's flush there, it's in there, seated nice. And uh, in the back, it's hard to see, but it's all the way into the back there. So it does fit, takes some suggestion, as you can see. Uh, but it does seat all the way into the back there. So um, if you're having trouble with it, just, you know, take Take a breath and give it another shot. You'll get it. Tape or whatever. I'm just gonna use my hand. There it is. Uh, don't bother looking for a torque or anything like that. Just you know, don't over crank it. You're pressing the metal on plastic. You just want it to be tight. 
just tight, that's it. And now we can start connecting terminals. Uh, I'm gonna go power first, then ground. Just gonna like some rubber. Oh, look at that snug. the new batteries in. Go back to OBD11 <clears throat> and register the new battery. 70 amp hours and it's an AGM. The old battery only had 59 amp hours. Okay, so I have my OBD11. I'm gonna plug it in first and you'll see it starts to turn red. You gotta put your car in accessory mode. Okay, now we're now we're connected. Uh, don't scan in the workshop. Oh, there we go. They do have it in the workshop. All right, so let's see. Uh, battery type. Change value to AGM. Activate. So change that to 70 to benefit from the larger capacity and now that's set i'll show you how to verify to make sure that using the workshop app for that worked all right to verify that whatever it did with the apps actually worked you have to go to roll units gateway adaptations battery adaptation and it'll tell you that, yes, it is now at 70. It has been changed to fleece, which is the AGM. The serial number, I'm going to change it to 00000, 000 November 16, 2024. Alright, so I set the serial number to the date. Manufacturer, I'm sending that to interstate. And upgrade that. Ah, they try to kick me out of this. That's weird because you can't do that with the apps. I guess I gotta pay for the subscription again to do any of this stuff, but I do have these credits, so I'm just gonna use the app and technically it registered a new battery at a new capacity. I don't think the apps thing does enough because what you wanna do is update the serial number and the manufacturer doesn't really matter, but the serial number definitely matters. Um, adaptation accepted. So that was a waste of points, but uh, whatever. Yeah, so now you know, don't waste your points. Um, if you have them, you know, if you have the plan, then you can just go into the adaptations. Okay, so. Losing voltage. Let's turn this on. saved yourself some money you've gotten yourself an upgraded better battery and uh, you know whatever they got us it's helpful though because when you need it you don't have to go to the dealer for it